Hello everyone and welcome to this mini lecture series on optimization for machine learning. Um, so what we are going to treat here is the question of how in optimization plays a very important role in training machine learning models, in particular nonlinear models, and why we should know some of the details behind optimization to really be good at training models and also to know the limitations of what's going on. But before we do so, uh, this first video will be a little bit about the motivation. Why do we need optimization? How does optimization come into the picture? And to address this, I'm starting with this question, what lies really at the heart of machine learning and how we can from there on motivate the use of optimization. And so if you think about this, the key component of all machine learning algorithms are really about function approximation. This means we always have some function that we do not know, but we collect data and then try to approximate this function from data. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to sketch a very general machine learning paradigm in the, in the case of supervised learning, and then I will you know, draw the connection to optimization. So what we usually have is, and this is why I, I call this function approximation is, we often have this unknown model for which we have um, data available, right? So what we have is we have a, a relation y is equal to f of z plus some noise. So we do not really know um, what this model is, right? It's unknown, but we assume that there exists a relation in this form. And so the question now is how do we use data to learn something about this function, even though we do not have an exact uh, description. So what we do is in supervised learning, which is also known as learning from examples, we collect data. So we have let's say, a set of input and output tuples. This is why it's called supervised, because we know the answer that our model is going to give us. And of these we have not one, but capital N examples. Right, and so this looks very abstract, but this is a, a good representation of basically anything that you can model. So the Z could be the pixels of an image, and the Y could be a class, what is seen in the image. Cat or a dog is the classical example. From a dynamic systems perspective, this Z can be you know, the weather temperature distribution maybe of today and why will be the temperature distribution of tomorrow. So we want to have a predictive model that tells us the weather forecast maybe. So Z is very general the input and this F is something we don't know but which gives us you know, the temperature of tomorrow in this weather example. So we have these examples, we do collect data and then we are in the setting, okay, let's use this data to learn the function F or an approximation thereof. So what we start with is with a decision, which kind of model are we actually going to train, right? We know it already a little bit of linear models, but this is about nonlinear models. So what we start with usually is um, a hypothesis space. A hypothesis set, which I'm going to note by capital H. And so this is my set of hypotheses that I'm allowing. So what you can think of is that H is, contains, or what we have is we have a small H, a particular model that is a member of this set of possible hypotheses. So this little H can be linear models, for instance. This is something we have already seen. But obviously it can be anything else as well. It can also be neural networks and all sorts of models that allow us to have an approximation of this input-output mapping. So what we have is we have this H which maps from Z to Y, so exactly represents this input-output mapping, but we don't know it, right? And so 
not to work in, in the space of nowhere, we are deciding, okay, this H comes from a particular set of hypotheses. Okay, so we allow us to H, for instance, to be a neural network. Then this is going to be determined by the weights that we have in the network. If it's a linear model, we have the weights that um, we need to multiply with the individual inputs and so on. And so we have this hypothesis set. So let's say we decide on now a linear model. And the question is now, how do we decide which is the best model out of this hypothesis set, right? So what we need in the next step is we need a learning algorithm. So what this means is we take the data and we say, okay, let's not work in thin air, but let's try to find the particular H out of this hypothesis set that does the best job for us. And then after the learning algorithm has done its magic, let's say, we're going to go into the details of what this is about, we arrive with our final hypothesis. So this is my final H then of Z, which is approximately our F of Z. And so here we are, right? So the learning algorithm takes our model, so the, the model class that we are trying to use to approximate our system, it takes the examples and then out of all the possible hypotheses creates the one that fits best our true model that we do not know, but given the data that does a good job. And so there are a few questions now. Um, first of all, well, what is the learning algorithm about? And then how do we even determine what is a good model? So what we need is, so the question is this approximation here. What does this mean, right? And so what you can define is you can say that we have an error measure And so let's call this um, L. That goes into this one. So we need to decide according to which metric, which measure tells us which is a good model and which is a bad one. And so what we can say is we let's take the example and let's just say on average, our model should do well on all the data that we have, okay? So this L can be one over N and then the sum over all my samples from one to n, and then the distance between the output, y i, and the input h of z i. Then we take, for instance, the squared loss function is a very common thing. You can define other error measures, but now let's go for, for simplicity with this quadratic loss function, and then we see, okay, if we have a loss function like this, and then we see if we have approximately the same relation, then this loss function should become small, right? So this error measure goes into the learning algorithm, but it also obviously goes in here to determine which is a good final hypothesis. Okay, and so now we are at this, uh, this overview, and here you see what optimization is important for. Okay, so we see we have this error measure and here is where optimization comes into place. So we do have data, we have decided on a hypothesis set, say the class of all linear models maybe, and we have defined a error measure, or I've denoted it by L here because it's what we call a loss function in, in learning. And let's say if we minimize this loss function, then we have a good hope that at least on our examples we have good performance and then, but we will comment on this uh, a little later, obviously also out of the samples that we will have a good approximation, but this comes later. Okay, so the optimization part is now to minimize over all my possible hypotheses this loss function L 
which is now is a function of my model h, right? So depending on which model I put in here, I get a smaller loss or I get a, a better loss. And so this is why optimization is so important in machine learning. It's at the heart of the learning algorithm. And this is why we should know quite a bit about this before you know, training models from data, because it is, it's a very powerful approach, but there are also a lot of pitfalls uh, associated with this that we should know about, and this is what we're going to cover in the next videos. But before we close, let me say that this is not my invention, but it's from a very good, a great book by uh, Abu Mostafa, which is called Learning from Data, and we will put the, the reference to this book where you can a lot learn a lot more about this diagram and also about the theory behind machine learning. Um, we will put it in the in the video description. So, but now I hope you have a good overview why optimization is so important, and we will continue in the next videos to study more what this hypothesis space is about and also how to really solve the optimization problem. Thank you.